in terms of the traditional model, um, a chartered broker would, would potentially offer you know two or three different options. What we really want to do is make sure that we can cover the whole market, so we can actually offer you know, maybe seven or eight options. Um, that might be the fastest option. It might be the most economical option. I think like from a technology position, obviously what we're doing in the industry we've seen is being disrupted in a sense. And a lot of people are part of the market trying to work out if they are being disrupted or if they're safe from disruption or they're going to be disrupted and which side of the line they fall on. I think the main cool thing is like at the heart of innovation and technology is to make this market more accessible, more efficient to all of the players. We are here in Miami at the Air Cargo Forum organized by Tiaka. And with me are the founders of uh, Charter Sync, uh, Ed Gillette and uh, Simon Watson. Very happy to have both of you join us for this conversation. Pleasure to be here. Yeah, pleasure to be here, Richard. Thank you. I think you have a very interesting story as uh, the starting of uh, Charter Sync. I think you also, both of you, have a very interesting history in terms of uh, your passion for aviation. Maybe we start with the story of uh, your interest for aviation and how you began to look at a digital solution for chartered broking. Yeah, aviation is certainly at the heart of, of Charter Sync and, and for, for us as the founding team. So I used to work for a tra traditional charter brokerage, really enjoyed my time there, but um, realized it was quite an inefficient process at the time. And um, it's where I actually met Simon. We, we um, decided to train to be commercial pilots. And it was during this time and during our intense training together that um, I described to Simon how inefficient the charter broker um, model was and um, the fact that there was no technology that existed. So um, we, we got our heads together, um, realized Simon's passion for aviation as well. And that's really where the, the idea of charting started to yeah. form. And I guess, yeah, from my side, so aviation, since a young kid, I always been passionate, wanted to be a pilot, um, got my pilot's license on my 16th birthday before I could actually drive a car, um, always had the aspiration to fly and uh, be a pilot, really thankfully you know, finished my degree in physics at university in the UK and then went on to start the airline training course um, with a national flag carrier in the UK um, and uh, my background also whilst I was at university got quite heavily into um, uh, technology, the application technology, software and developing applications. So I think that Charter Sync is the combination of that passion for aviation and passion for technology and innovation. And yeah, like I said, when he was talking about what he used to do as a charter broker, I knew aviation, I knew aircraft, but I didn't really know the chartering space as such and definitely not the cargo chartering space. And when he was explaining what he used to do as a job, it just sounded crazy. You know, the number of emails and phone calls to even just find availabilities and pricing, it just, uh, looked like a clear opportunity in the market. Yeah, but even today I hear and I get the sense that brokering is a person who is actually at the at the table with a phone and perhaps now probably a email contacts and email communication. You're bringing in another layer in terms of uh, technology on top of what is already happening, but how much has changed since you launched Charter Singh in terms of um, how how easy this has become to find a charter aircraft availability, uh, how soon you can get uh, an aircraft, uh, and what are the kind of uh, convenience that you bring into, into charter broking for, uh, for shippers and for trade forwarders? For us, we're, we're all about making it effortless and accessible. So we want to combine the right level of technology with a great level of experience and providing that customer service because there are so many variables in a in a cargo charter flight and we just want to concentrate on those areas of technology where we can increase speed and efficiency in the, the quoting process and the actually the, the management of the flight as well but we know that um, to provide that kind of customer service we need to supplement that with with good experience kind of traditional charter broker um, experience and behind the scenes as well so I think from like a product strategy perspective, when we very first launched in 2019 in July at Air Cargo Europe in Munich, we had the slogan at that point was the revolution in Air Cargo Charter. And I think that what we have found over the last three years, two and a half, three years of trading is that really the technology, it's like an evolutionary process. I mean, obviously seeing it a lot in the air freight market with the cargo charter booking, the, the cargo booking platforms in that market. And it is, and, and a lot of those were started in 2011, 2012, and have taken five, six, seven years to gain traction, mass in the market. And we're now at this like amazing stage where that air freight market is on a fantastic trajectory course. With the cargo charter um, business, we're the very first um, players to the market to even digitize the cargo charter or cargo brokering process. Um, we're still at the very start of our journey with a long 
way to go. Um, and I think the main key thing is that we are digitizing the market and making it, like I said, more accessible and more efficient for all of the players in that market. I want to understand uh, two things. One is the core technology that is actually driving this, uh, your software, uh, software that is driving this, uh, this product. Uh, how do you how do you collect the data? Because you would need data in terms of uh, the number of cargo planes available, and also have uh, where where do you match the demand with supply? Good question. So in the charter market versus the air freight market, in the air freight market there are rate card sheets for a routing for a per, a per there's a per kilo rate for a certain routing. There's a matrix on a rate card. In the charter market, that doesn't exist. The clearest equivalent of that is the spot charter market. So you ask the buyer or the seller for a price at that time, they'll give you a price, and that's available at that spot rate at that time. When we very first launched, we looked at what everyone else was doing, and obviously we realized there was no rate card sheet, so you can't do that. So the way in which a lot of the air freight platforms and air freight systems work is they started with basically a database of this rate card sheet so the charter equivalent for us was spot request and quote so the first version of our system and then the new relaunch version of our system in june of this year may june of this year is in is basically which is a built up on that is a spot request and quote so as a traditional broker forwarder i would if i was doing it a traditional way you would send out an email and you'd get responses that come back in a in a spot sense on email what our system does is it basically at that request stage gives you all of the airlines and carriers that it goes out to, comes back with the options all in one place. So it's carriers basically validating quotes and options that come back. So it's centralizing the process, making it a lot faster and efficient. And then there's that evolutionary process you know, from a tech perspective is not being spot request and quote, but actually integrations and you know making it so that when a user comes to the, the request page, they can see availabilities and indicative pricing instantly, which is like the the next level on basically. So it's taking it from emails to then digitizing it in a spot request process to then looking forward to the future, which is what we're really excited about because that's when you really start to, to move the, camp, the, the needle as it were. Tell us about the robustness of the, of the technology that you're using. Yeah, so uh, we're actually very excited to announce um, a new integration uh, this week with Rocket Route. So in terms of the uh, quoting experience for our, our airlines, we're actually halving the, the time it takes to provide those quotes for our clients and we're more importantly improving the accuracy of the quotes so using all of the kind of live weather information with confidence we can provide um, quotations that are accurate within a couple of minutes and if you compare that to the traditional uh, market at the moment um, with the old-fashioned way of doing it um, just writing um, figures on the back of a you know piece of paper um, and um, using a calculator, it's it's all very accurate, and it's it integrated within a couple of couple of seconds through our um, system. So um, mm. it's quite an exciting step for us now, but very robust process, um, and it's the full end to end process as well. So it's not just the quoting experience; it's the full management of that flight as well through the platform. Okay, let me understand. You said halving the time in terms of the court. Let's consider that I'm a, I'm a shipper or I'm a freight forwarder. I need a charter to be booked on a Friday evening, uh, let's say to Commonwealth Independent States, maybe uh, to Baku. I don't know. It could be a several uh, several A space. So you need over overfly rights, for example. I think this is a this is a DGR product. How do I get my charter completed, booking completed? And if we can, as a simplest. Uh, uh, explanation how would you how do you help me to get and what do I need to do that yeah so you, you would send that request so it, it could be late late at night on a Friday evening you send that request that request will then be sent to all the relevant operators so depending on the dimensions of the cargo the time constraints required for that cargo to arrive at certain points in, in time and in terms of those those questions in terms of the traffic rights um, in terms of uh, checking whether or not the aircraft can be handled in Baku as soon as the request has been sent this is where our, our team um, and our experience are behind the scenes. We're, we're, we're speaking to those airlines. Uh, we're speaking to the airports and we're checking with them. You know, thank, you know, we can see your quotation here, but we need to make sure that this aircraft can arrive at this time. Um, and can we assist you with your, your uh, traffic rights and permits? So it's kind of that combination of the tech and uh, the experience behind the scenes to make sure that what we're offering is a, a validated quotation that is, is ready to go. And uh, yeah, it's that verification process effectively. So you still need a human intervention in the process or I can just get on your platform and can I fill in the details? Do I get a quote in like two minutes? Does that actually fulfill all that the demands that I have? 
and how do I, if I have to make alterations, how do I go, go back? Is that, is that as easy as like booking my flight tickets? The way we've been um, building up uh, Charter Sync. So Charter Sync is for um, freight forwarders. Um, so the, the, the audience for Charter Sync and freight forwarders that need um, that helping hand. So they would naturally go to a traditional charter broker and they would send an email request and then they would get options that would come back by email, maybe one or two options uh, with a price and the next availability. So Charter Sync is filling that that um, that marketplace. So that's for that, that's facing the market for for freight forwarders that can send us a request. Our technology then goes out to the market to get the options back. And then when the options come back, our team are then pushing those. So there is a person there talking to the client. Here are your options on the system. These are the ones we would advise you could, you should go with. Um, so again, just using that, that people plus the technology for those freight forwarders who uh, need a helping hand, um, of which, you know, that, that's a, that's a portion of the market. And then there's another portion of the market, obviously, for freight forwarders that um, sort of can do it themselves and, and traditionally go to carriers themselves. So I, th I think it's the it's the ad hoc nature of a of a charter flight that because there are so many variables and it and we're going a, opposite to a scheduled flight that's where we have to make sure that we are doing those checks as well to make sure the airport can handle the aircraft make sure the cargo can arrive at the right time there's going to be someone to do the security checks um, that's really where the the human intervention is necessary um, on top of the technology. So. I sense that that the complexity becomes much greater when you have like. Uh, an immediate charter that I need to operate uh, to a to perhaps to a destination which is really complex. Perhaps look at look at maybe an African destination, but then it has to happen. To that extent, how are you bringing in that efficiency in terms of the speed and the accuracy by which I am able to get a quote in the time that is that I would I would like to get it? I think um, yeah. So in terms of the traditional model. Um, a charter broker would, would potentially offer you know two or three different options what we really want to do is make sure that we can cover the whole market so we can actually offer you know, maybe seven or eight options um, that might be the fastest option it might be the most economical option um, just so that we can provide more choice to our, our clients but um, as well as that providing the accuracy of the quotations mm. um, i think like if you compare what charter sync does so if you as a freight forwarder go to a traditional broker and go to charter sync Jodsing is using that technology to scour the market to find the best option that a tra using traditional methods may not be identified. And because we're using technology to reach out to carriers and to get options back, pushing those options back. So your experience, if you put them next to each other, one would be all by email and slower. The other one, and you may not know if that's fully covered the market. Whereas if you were to come to Charterseek, you know that that technology has been used to make sure you've got the best option. You will get it fastest and you will also get it all in one place in one dashboard to compare those options. So from a user experience perspective for a freight forwarder, uh, and that's just in the requesting process, the contracting is all done electronically and then the management of that flight and actively tracking that flight is all done in one place. So they can end to end process. So if you compare the two um, experiences, it's yeah, much, much more faster and easier or simpler. It's Especially if you're spending a lot of money and you're really concerned because if you're spending that much money on that type of distress purchase you want to know where that aircraft is at any one time as soon as it takes off um and, and so that's you know again using that technology with that experience who are your customers um so we, we're at the moment we're working directly with um so our clients would be our freight forwarding clients um so we we just want to make them look as good as they can to to their client and their, and their shipper and um, just providing that level of technology to enhance that service. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And forwarders, the way we see it is forwarders, charter is one mode of transport along within a subset of air, air freight. Um, and then you obviously you've got road, trucking, ocean. And so sometimes charter will form one part of a multimodal shipment, or it may be the core mode of transport. So we respect that the freight forwarders position there is to coordinate and basically you know, act as um, that agent to bring all, all the pieces of the puzzle together. Um, so yeah, that's sort of why we we see the forward as our three main um, customer. Members. So you integrate also the other modes into into the into the courting process. Not not, not for the yeah. not for the this time. It's it's uh, purely airport to airport, but uh, we're certainly open to lots of opportunities on that front. Um, and I think that's where technology can add a lot of value with those different modes of transport. So. How do you work with uh, charter brokers? Chapman Freeborn and Air Charter Service, are they your friends? We don't currently um, work with them as they wouldn't be our, our clients, but um, in terms of any kind of managed capacity that they may be operating, um, we would still be utilizing those aircraft, Magma Aviation being uh, one such mm. example. Um, we, would, we would be utilizing that aircraft, um, whether you know that's through Chapman Freeborn, if that's directly through Magma, um, that, that's 
exactly that. Yeah, I think like from a technology position, obviously what we're doing in the industry we've seen as being a disruptor in a sense. And a lot of people or parties in the market trying to work out if they are being disrupted or if they're safe from disruption or they are going to be disrupted and which side of the line they fall on. I think the main core thing is like at the heart of innovation and technology is to make this market more accessible, more efficient to all of the players. And you know, the traditional charter brokers, they bring with them their experience. And at the end of the day, you know, that is what their, their core position is in, in, in the market. And technology is not there to remove key players or the, in the industry as such. It should be there to enhance the experience of all players. And so, yeah, I think that we're a very new entrant to the market. We're doing things differently. And I think the, you know, the core heart of it is to innovate and to move the market forward. Um, you know, in, in some ways in markets that technology has been used and players have not, no longer had a position in the market that tends to show that those players in the market are working on non uh, distransparency but if those players then still exist with the introduction of technology then that you know that's a clear evidence that they're adding value and at the end of the day someone as long as someone can bring value and add value to the end client then they have a position in the market so you would have all the the cargo charter divisions of airlines as as database in your in your software and then freight forwarders when they put in the request and then you will connect the the availability of the aircraft and the other processes. Yeah, so just depending on that request, we want to make sure that that request is sent to all the relevant operators for that particular request and to make sure we don't miss anyone. Because a you know, human being, if, if you're doing it in the traditional sense, you would pick up the phone or you'd send an email, but you may be limited in terms of knowing which operators to, to contact or, or it may be relying on those operators that you frequently use. But you're potentially missing an opportunity with those other operators that haven't been contacted so really with our technology we want to make sure that there's no bias involved with contacting operators everyone has a fair chance and hopefully we're contacting the operator that's in the right place at the right time every time so what's your business model how do you make money so the main the way charter sync operates we um, operate on a margin basis to the buyer to the purchaser or the charterer um, and that's how we've run for the last couple of years and it, so yeah char uh, charge on the demand side basically that's how the business model is operated to date and then obviously looking at for the revenue streams and how um, that technology and how we can use that marketplace model um, in, in different ways is sort of looking to the future. Okay, let's conclude with briefly about the company, how it's funded, how big is the company, how many people work for, and uh, how do you want to really scale up your operations? How do you want to scale? The business is entirely owned by myself and Simon, so we're, we're 50% uh, each at the moment. Um, we're very fortunate we've been able to grow the business organically to date, um, and um, as you can imagine, with the, the cost of developing the technology as, as well as doubling our headcount in the last 12 months, uh, we're up to a team size of 18 at the moment in our office in London. We've got some very ambitious plans um, over the next 12 months, uh, which will see the opening of a, a new office for ChartSync. And we're constantly looking to continue to recruit new experience into the team. And we will be looking potentially for a, a new partner to help us increase and accelerate that level of growth to what we've seen so far with kind of doubling of our revenues every year so far, which has yeah. been exciting. Do you intend to raise some funding and uh, are there any potential investors looking at your product? Uh, good question. I mean, like, the crux of your question is how will we scale the business? Um, organically, we, we won't be able to do that. Um, and so, yeah, we will need, um, and we are looking at opportunities for external parties that would bring not just capital, but strategic um, input into the business. The air cargo at the air freight market is a subset of the logistics industry and charter is another subset of the air freight market. So we need a partner who understands that subset of the market or has an appreciation of the nuances and kind of dynamics that come with that. So yeah, we are very much open to seeing what opportunities um, we, we haven't actively pursued, but there's opportunities out there. Um, and you know, in terms of just commenting on what Ed said in terms of whilst growing the team size, continually investing in technology and doubling down on that, and also maintaining a profitable business since we very first started the business. It's been a lot of work on mine and Ed's shoulders to get it where we are. And we were most recently um, won the Innovation Award with the Lloyd's British Bank Excellence Awards last night, um, which was uh, a very fantastic win for all of the team and did a fantastic job and just shows the real hard work across all of the company. So. Yeah. Is there any similar product in the market or is someone looking at creating something similar? Any idea? Air Freight has got a lot of attention and 
we see competition in two ways, I guess. So competition from traditional players digitizing their processes or it being a new entrant to the market that maybe are doing air freight or are looking at the charter market. There's no one that we know of um, with an active product in the market. We do know of a number of um, other players looking at application of technology. I guess the main thing I'd say is that me and Ed started the journey back in 2014 um, by a combination of our um, knowledge in aviation, chartering and technology. And, you know, I think we've spent about 60% of all of our profits on doubling down on technology. The level of investment that we've put into technology has meant that we've got about a five-year lead. Um, but, um, you know, as it is, the, the, I'm, sure, I'm sure there will there will be competitors. So. Yeah. And it's important not to be too complacent and to uh, continue innovating. So, yeah. Ed and Simon, thanks a lot. Really appreciate your time. Thank, Thank you, you very Reggie. much. Thank thanks, you. Reggie.